Since the dawn of humanity, we have been interested in big things. It's baked into our very being. Whether it be little kids fascinated with dinosaurs, or massive ancient monuments that stretched into the sky, or the modern skyscraper, and the vast variety of films with large entities or vehicles present. But often I find myself wondering where we now live in the era where the best of the giants that once roamed our planet are now extinct. The dinosaurs have been lost for millions of years, and many of the megafauna which once populated our planet has only recently gone extinct, with all that remains of these fascinating animals being their bones, or brightly coloured plastic toys. But then I remember, I live in an era where the largest animal to ever exist in the billions of years of our planet's history is alive. This animal is truly a titan, unmatched in our history. And the only thing that's stopping people from understanding just how vast it is, is that they're quite hard to find. And they live in the largest body of water on Earth, the ocean. But the name is simple, and you probably know it. And this living kaiju's name is the blue whale. Before we begin, I think it's worth noting that our understanding of the blue whale is not as complete as other animals, partly because they're marine animals, and so there's a challenge there in understanding their behaviour properly, considering the fact that we are not, so long expeditions studying these animals can be quite expensive. The other factor that plays into this is again, they're quite rare, which makes studying blue whales even harder. But there are things we know for a fact, so with that all out of the way, let's begin. Blue whales are found in basically every ocean on our planet, with the exception of some seas which you could classify as basically bays, on the far northern Arctic regions. The ranges will vary throughout the year, with blue whales spending their winters in the tropical waters close to the equator, before migrating to the polar regions during the summer. It is during these winter months that breeding will occur. It's thought that a female will indicate her readiness by leaving a trail of pheromones in the water, which a male blue whale will pick up on and follow until he reaches the female, at which point, if she's satisfied with him, he will pair up for the breeding season, with the pair travelling together and communicating with one another, with their sounds being among the loudest sounds in the natural world, sometimes being louder than a fighter jet. Once they've paired up, they will mate multiple times throughout the winter, with the blue whale male possessing one of the largest weapons of any animal in the animal kingdom, at 10 feet in length, and is capable of producing 20 litres of sperm in one session. After the winter ends, the pair will separate, and both will continue their solitary lives. If successful, the female has to wait around one year before the calf is born. It's also worth noting as well, the male will play pretty much no role in the raising of his calf. In the meantime, whilst the female is waiting for her calf to be born, she will spend that time in the polar regions, getting as much food in her as she can, because once the calf is born, she will not eat and will be focused on ensuring the safety of this calf. For this reason, she can eat up to 66% of her own body weight in one day. After this year has passed, a single calf will be born. Although, in extremely rare cases, blue whales have been known to give birth to twins, but the chances of both surviving are basically zero because it increases the stress on the mother, so the result of which will be that usually one of them will end up dying. The calf at birth will weigh 2,700 kilograms and will be 8 meters long. Once born, the mother will nudge her calf to the surface in order to allow it to take its first breath. She will do this periodically until the calf is able to do this independently. Once this is done, from the mother often and a lot, like seriously a lot. To give you an idea, a single blue whale calf can drink 600 liters of milk per day, which if you were to replicate this volume, you'd need around 23 dairy cows. Aside from this, the calf will stay by its mother's side, feeding from her until the age of around eight months old, at which point they will be fully weaned and will have already started to learn how to hunt. The same things its mother does, which the blue whale's diet consists of basically krill. And we're talking an astronomical amount of krill, as I'm sure you can imagine for such a large animal. So they'll need to eat around 16 tons per day which is around 12% of their body weight. How do they do this? Well, they'll swim towards the krill at 22 miles per hour with their mouths at an 80 degree open angle. Whilst they're doing this, they will swallow 
220 tons of water with all the krill inside. They will then release the water through these baleen plates, which are these things that look like teeth or the bristles on a brush. But these serve a vital role, as whilst they're filtering out all the water, it ensures that none of the krill can exit. Once all the water's left, the blue whale will then swallow all the krill in its mouth. Once this is done, they will continue to make multiple passes at the school of krill, often doing a 180 degrees turn. And for what it's worth, they do eat other things such as jellies and various other small marine animals. But as a filter feeder, they are limited in what they can actually consume. At the age of one, the calf will have matured and will then leave the mother to make its own way in the ocean to roam and also to search for food. They won't reach their breeding size until the ages of around five to 15, but they do reach sexual maturity at 10 years old, but they usually don't start breeding until they're around 35. It's at this point that you realize just how massive the blue whale can get, with them growing up to 30 meters, which is longer than two standard school buses and can weigh 200 tons. And everything is supersized with their tongues being the size of an elephant and their heart being bigger than a Volkswagen Beetle. And the blue whale's lungs are 1000 times larger than ours, which allows them to hold their breath for a maximum of 90 minutes. Although usually they'll just hold their breath for 30. With such a long time underwater and also an extremely large tail, this allows them to reach depths of up to 1,660 feet. And that cycle there, of feeding and swimming and feeding is basically the life of a blue whale. That and they will breed, with females breeding every two to three years. Now, you might wonder with such a large recharge time between breeding sessions, how the hell does the blue whale continue to survive? Well, it's partly helped by the fact the blue whale can live for around 90 years on average, with some individuals living until they were around an estimated 110. So it's a lot of time to raise kids. Now, you might wonder, how the hell do we figure out that the blue whales can live until they're 110? Well, basically, when a blue whale dies and washes ashore, scientists will look at the growth layers of teeth and also the earwax, as it grows like a tree and it'll naturally develop rings. So from that, we're able to calculate their age. Another factor that helps the blue whale live for so long is their just raw size. With such a large animal, very few things will be willing to challenge it with only one animal being known to actively hunt blue whales. And that is the most dangerous animal in the ocean, the orca. Although they will usually target young blue whales and calves. And if threatened, the blue whale will usually slap their large tail as a defense. But to be frank, they're so big that they can take a lot of damage. Hence why orcas typically leave blue whales alone. That's why the animal that has had the biggest impact on the blue whale population was, and arguably still is, humans. What it's worth remembering is that blue whales probably had a small population anyway, because the ocean can only handle so many massive creatures, but has had an effect on their population, which they've only recently started to recover from. Now, I should say, whaling is a practice that has been done for thousands of years from various different cultures, with some of the first evidence of a dead blue whale being found in Iceland sometime in 900 AD. But the real issues started when the industrial whaling took off in the 18th century. The effect that industrial whaling had on all whales populations was massive. And to give you an idea of just how bad it was, at the height of the industry in 1930, 30,000 blue whales were taken in in a single year. However, once blue whaling fishing was banned in the 1960s, their population would slowly begin to recover. But it's worth remembering we were very close to the extinction of these fascinating animals. In the modern day, issues such as accidental fish strikes, where a whale has moved into the path of a cruise liner, are the most common causes of death. Also, there are issues in entanglement in commercial fishing gear, and there is now also the issue of a fall in the krill population, as global warming affects the world's marine ecosystems and the temperature of the ocean. There is also now issues with general pollution, and also noise pollution in the water, which affects how well blue whales are able to navigate the oceans. So, whilst the biggest issue of whaling has been dealt with, with the vast majority of nations all agreeing to ban this practice, there is still work that needs to be done to ensure that the blue whale continues to exist. Anyway, before we go, I need to show you this image. Now, a bit of context is needed here, because I'm going to be frank with you. If you, if you saw this, you probably think it was Photoshop. 
but it's not. It's a real image. So this is the only taxidermied blue whale in the world. It's in the Gothberg Museum in Sweden. And this is a juvenile that was killed in 1865 and it was taxidermied at great cost. It was then put on display in the, in the Gothberg Museum. Now, this image comes from when they had to move it in 1910 to a bigger building. So they had to cut it up into sections and knock the wall down so they could get it out to the building and onto the horses that would then move it. One of the interesting features of this taxidermy was that they put its jaw on a hinge so people could go inside the whale, which is how we get images like this of people eating inside a blue whale. And for most of the 20s, anybody, you could go inside the whale at any time you wanted. However, after a couple were found procreating during the 1930s, it was only opened up for Christmas to meet Santa and also during elections. Which I mean, it's a different type of Santa's workshop, I suppose. But hey ho, those Scandies are absolutely mental. So I'm not really that surprised. But what's obvious is that this animal, the blue whale, is truly one of a kind, the largest animal to ever exist and amongst the most beautiful and graceful. And the fact that we were so close to losing it is unforgivable. And whilst their population is now slowly recovering, work still needs to be done to ensure that the blue whale stays with us for as long as possible. Because if all we're left with is a blue whale taxidermy and a mounted penis bone on a, on a museum, on the wall of a museum somewhere, I swear by the almighty, I'm gonna get extremely angry. So, that's the blue whale. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed today's video, hit that like and subscribe button, it really helps me out. And be sure to leave a whale emoji in the comments so I know you got this far. In the meantime, I recommend to you this video on the African, on the African murder horse. If you decide not to go with my stellar recommendation, then remember, don't get swallowed by a whale, eat some fruit, and I'll see you in the next one.